Creature in the Well is an odd mix of dungeon crawling and pinball. It follows in the roots of games like Sonic Spinball and Yoku's Island Express by combining multiple game genres to create something completely unique. This adventure opens up with our main protagonist, Bot C, waking up in the middle of a terrible sandstorm. He's one of the last robotic engineers and it's up to him to dive into the trenches of this well in town, restore the power to the facility, and provide shelter for people left dwelling nearby. It's no easy task though. A giant creature lives in the darkest corners of the power plant, warning you constantly to back away. With no other choice, Bot C ignores the warnings and has to avoid being trapped by one of the creature's many trap rooms filled with mines, bumpers, turrets, and more. It's a story filled with mystery in this dystopian-like setting, leaving you to be the last glimmer of hope. While at first glance, Creature in the Well may look like a dungeon crawler, it truly is more of a pinball or brick breaker. Yes, you'll be traversing dungeons down the well, but each part of the dungeon is broken up into rooms consisting of a game of pinball. It's an interesting concept for sure, one that I wouldn't expect to work, but it does. Inside these rooms you'll find all sorts of obstacles. Bumpers, switches, and bombs are just some of the targets you'll face. Using one of the melee weapons you start off with or find along the way, Botsy can swing at the pinballs to activate the needed switches and proceed on to the next room. These pinballs aren't actually pinballs though, instead they're energy. It's not only a pinball, but a currency that's used to power just about everything in the environment. Bouncing the energy off the bumpers and other obstacles in the room activates switches and other parts of the puzzle, like completing a circuit in order to open the next door. As you dive deeper into the well, these puzzles only become more complex and rather difficult with time-based switches, projectile hazards, and more. While the challenge is welcome, it can at times border the line of frustrating with its punishment. Upon losing all your health, you're pushed out of the well by the creature and forced to retread your steps to where you left off. Luckily, boss fights have portals that let you skip most of that, but when you're not fighting a boss, it's a big pain. I think the brilliance of games like Super Meat Boy and Celeste is that you're able to quickly get back into the action and try again. With this, you're going to go through the same rooms over and over again, and despite the doors being open, the enemies are still there and in your way just trying to get back to where you left off. To combat the challenge, you'll have an assortment of different melee weapons that offer different abilities, all useful in puzzle solving. The hammer, for example, is able to slow down time a bit, giving you a bit of time to make decisions in action. Your dash move will let you quickly dodge an oncoming laser blast. Frustrations with some of the challenge spikes aside, I did love a lot of the gameplay aspects here. Bosses were challenging while feeling uniquely designed for the rooms they're in. On top of the collectible items, secret paths led to alternative rooms that only piqued my curiosity. Creature in the Well looks like a beautiful painting. It's stylized to look like a flat color painting come to life. The shifts between a top-down view and a full 3D back of the character view only helps sell that effect. The contrast between the generally flat environment and the 3D perspective of the main character creates a lovely scene. It's better complemented by the fluid animation than just about everything. Seeing the little energy orbs attack an obstacle in the room is hypnotizing to watch every time. Switching from dock mode to portable mode, nothing really seemed lost in the transition. In fact, the smaller display helped keep things looking sharp. Aside from the visuals, what really helps to capture the dystopian setting is the audio design. The world doesn't just feel abandoned, it sounds like it too. Walking through the well, I'd hear ominous tracks that sound like it belonged in some sort of sci-fi game, maybe a long-lost Metroid title. It was eerie sounding, capturing the vibes of a long-lost forgotten world. I also enjoyed the attention to detail in exploring the environment. Stepping onto the metal bridges changed up the sound of your footsteps, and stepping into the healing fountain activated the HC rumble as you maxed out your health. Anytime developers cleverly use the HC rumble along with sound design to further create an immersive moment, I just can't help but applaud it. Creature in the Well is one challenging puzzle game with quite the unique gameplay formula. It's different and entertaining, but the challenge can at times overextend itself to the point of becoming more annoying than challenging. When it doesn't trip over itself, it's an example of what creative minds can still do to change up the genres we've become so used to. That's easily one of the most exciting parts of games like this. I just wish that this one stuck the landing better.